So I'm Dan. And I'm Nick, yeah, folks. Yeah. Oh, yeah, together yeah. we form the Unpanderers. 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 That's us, folks. And if, yeah, if you're listening, you're an, you're an umper. What we like to call you. Hey, Fuse. umpers. Fuse. Mm. Not all yins. Is that incorrect? <laughs> Y'alls. If you say yin, is that bad? Like you're from a, a part of Pennsylvania that, ooh, ooh. kind of a trash hole? Fuse, guys. Yins. No, yins. Yins? Is, I don't That's what yinsers are. Oh, yinsers? That's what they're called? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Do you know who they are? I never heard them called that before, actually. Oh, yeah. Pittsburgh Penguins fans. Mm. They literally, a lot of them eat trash. Not because they're, like, poor. I mean, they are poor, but they can afford food. They prefer the taste of garbage. <laughs> it's fascinating. <laughs> wow. That doesn't surprise me, actually. I know. It's kind of a Western PA thing. They, they actually say they... They used to filter the Three River beer, if it was called. Huh. Now they, they don't even filter it. It's like it just comes in through like a garbage can. They stick it in there and they throw it in bottles. Interesting. Yeah, I've heard they have like farm yeah. to table and then back to table restaurants. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so that's that's when their families get together there, Dan. <laughs> Let's uh, keep it PG here for the yeah. podcast. Ah, we're just having some fun out there. <laughs> Before we get started... Uh, we would like to say. Your team is dying. Don't worry. In five years, they won't be able to compete. <laughs> I, I give them three. Okay? Three years? Okay. Salary cap at you. Oh, yeah. Oh, good. It's going to creep up. Huh? Good. I like it. <laughs> um, we would like to say, before we get real serious here, is that we at the Umpanders, we don't condone anything said in herein, any of the opinions, any uh, disseminations. Do you want to add to this? Any other things? Hmm. We can't give Legal you any afflictions, um, no diseases. This is digital. Yeah. We're going to share everything we can mm -hmm. through this medium. Everything. But it doesn't reflect anything we think or mean. Nothing. And we're not all mediums. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> not all of us. This medium, though. Yeah. This medium. Mm -hmm. I'm more... Uh. <laughs> That's girth. <laughs> they call him the magical tree, tree, tree trunk, tree stump. Um, I don't know which would be. Is there a, um, an in between? Like if you nope. lose the top of a tree, what is that? Still the that's is that the stump? It starts to branch off. That's a good. That's a good question. We talked about this in a previous podcast. Did we? About the the yeah. guy with two. Oh yeah yeah. He Good friend of the podcast, actually. Yeah, we don't know. Shout that. out, Diplo. <laughs> oh, that's it. Diplo is his uh, sandal. Di something. Di, and it begins with P. Di, that's for damn sure. <laughs> it, be, it begins and ends with P. It doesn't always. Mm. Uh, another thing we like to say here at the Umpanders is we're not for the eighteen and under crowd. Oh yeah, not for the youngins. I mean, that was clearly obvious. Yeah. And we stated it. If you didn't hear a minute ago, it we stated every time. Every single time, folks at home. And if you don't hear it, you uh, got to go through every episode just to make listen sure. Listen for it. Hmm? Deluge those views on top of both of us. <laughs> we, we really need it. <laughs> I would love to get covered in views. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So I'm gonna huh. I'm gonna be honest. I mm -hmm. I haven't been following the uh, the Flyers too much, and uh -huh. I didn't realize that uh -huh. they had the second pick in pick in the draft. Nolan Patrick. Yeah. Yeah. Which is he's actually be a stud. The, yeah, he's the best pick from what I, I read. Yes. He was consensus number one for like a year. Mm -hmm. And then uh, he had that sports hernia and he missed part of the year. And uh, the black horse showed up the uh, Swedish finish? Yeah, Nico Hershey. Yeah, Swedish. I forget he's from. Swedish. He's like 30 pounds lighter and like an inch shorter. Okay. Real good. Yeah. Devils. Anyway, he showed up out of nowhere. You know. Mm -hmm. What's funny is um, because I I ruled out that we weren't going to get the guy I wanted. I really wanted Nolan Patrick. And I was like, they're going to take him because that's – he's number one pick. Mm -hmm. uh, they're going to do it. And he's yeah. bigger. He's stronger. And he's probably going to have a better career. So I said, I'm going to pretend my hardest that Nico Hirsch Hirschier is going to be the better player. And I read all these articles that were pro Nico, and I would be like, mm, yeah. But I was like faking it. And so when they picked him first, I was like, oh, this is oh awesome. <laughs> Woo! I don't have to pretend we had the right choice. Woo! We got the number one pick. So have you ever there been you go, at, folks. Have you ever been at, like, a, 
red box and picking out a movie and you're like you don't know if you want this one or that one and then you're like okay i'll just i'll flip a coin and you say heads <laughs> and by the time it lands you're like i don't i don't want it to be heads <laughs> and then it's well or the other one like mm-hmm. it goes tails and you're like i should play best out of three mm-hmm. and, and then going. you flip again and you're like yeah i'm getting the other one <laughs> there was no reason for the coin flip yeah it was the decision point that really made you push yourself towards the direction there's probably a word for that there's a word for everything isn't it I don't know. One of Do you these... think that's one of the deep sorrows or the Dictionary whatever of obscure so... sorrows you're mentioning? It's probably in there. Yeah. The good friends of the podcast, actually. That's we should plug them. Hey, if you like us, check these guys out. They're a little known podcast, I know, but I hope they get a lot of overflow overflow views from us. Overflow and flows. Uh, I'm actually mm-hmm. looking. I made a list of all of the uh, Dictionary of Obscure Sorrows. Because uh, I want to do that as one of our episodes. So I'm reading cool. if there's anything Sounds that... Sounds like... Sounds like you have a mental disorder, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I like you. <laughs> yeah, I'm doing all the research here. Are they alphabet to top? Alpha- Damn it. <laughs> you got, my we, words yeah. my, I'm getting <laughs> tripped up in my own tongue. <laughs> Folks, I just came back from vacation number three or something. And they're Well, they're not all week-long vacations. They're all like four-day pieces. So that's how we have so many of them, I guess. Mm-hmm. I just got finished like a three-day weekend or a four-day weekend a week ago, and then I did four days of work, and then I did five days of vacation, and it's just messing with me because it's like you drink too much, you do this too much, you got to get back and do an awful podcast with someone you don't even like. <laughs> uh, I do a different one with yeah. someone else. <laughs> Thank I God. I love this. This yeah, one's a good that one. That one sucks. <laughs> yeah, that one's garbage. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Show my brother-in-law the podcast. He's like, yo, yeah. His name's Justin. I don't know if you know him. Oh, I yeah, can say yeah, his yeah. first name. Yeah, yeah. Whatever the hell I want. Yeah. I met him, yeah. Yeah, yeah. He a uh, hockey player. I know. It's, yeah. It's not bad. That's the way to go. That's... So he so he actually watched an episode? Yeah, like five, ten minutes. We were, uh, we were all drinking. It was like 11 o'clock at night. Huh. And then we talked about some of our favorite podcasts. And he's the one who uh, recommended uh, one of the guys from the league. Is in a, a podcast with a couple other guys, and they do what I texted you. They literally just watch bad movies, take notes, and come back and talk about the movie in super depth. Huh. And that's what the that's what their episode. I, I don't remember the name of it, but it, it sounded really good, and I would check it out. Friends of the podcast, actually. Yeah, if we had more time, I think we would be able to do that. Right, right. It requires a little bit too much time, and it's been done before now, so it's yeah. I don't copy. like sloppy seconds. I kind of want to try to do what we do right now, but do it while we play video games. Because I don't think that we'd miss that much. We might be like, now, we might have pauses, but... Well, do you want to... Destiny 2. Think... It's already out. Not for a computer yet. Oh, okay. October You're... 20-something. Fourth. Oh, it is going to be PC? Maybe uh-huh. I'll uh, maybe give it a go. I've never yeah. played the Destiny. i never played it. Neither have I. And a bunch of people in my oh, office are trying to get there. Oh. Look at this guy. They're trying to make me buy a PS4, and I was like, you, "Ooh, that's nope. like, mm, three or two." Yeah. You, and you also realize you're between systems almost. Yeah, the it's next like, system's going to come feel out. Feel the crest it's coming. We're already cresting. There's yeah. no no need unless you got a super deal on a PS4. Mm-hmm. Uh, unless Sony would like to sponsor the Unpanders, in which case buy a PS4, PS4, <laughs> folks. Oh <laughs> man, your words. Now you have we to say after some... me, chrysanthemum, chrysanthemum. Chrysanthemum. Oh, yes, I got a word you can't say. Got it. That's all right. I got, there's there's a few words I can't say, and they're they're on this podcast. Not no, all all four or five. They're of them. all directed to Dan at the podcast. Uh, let's do a smirk or smile break up here. Let's just let's just say. Let's you go. got you got one loaded, ready? Yeah, yeah, sure. I got it's a smirk, so, like an old person smirk. Old person smirk. Smirk. Add an old and person, I, or like you feel like an old, old person when you smirk. I'm, Okay, give it a go. So, about eight years ago, however the hell old I was back then, in my 20s, hmm. uh, hanging out with this guy on the river. He's got a cool boat. It's like a river boat, right in the Delaware River. I figured this is hick stuff I can't handle. I did it. It was pretty awesome. You're always you're chilling on the boat. He's got a wakeboard. Everyone's doing it. they got life jacket vests. I've never done anything like this before. He says, try it. So I try, I can't get up because like when the boat takes off, you're supposed to just like hold on, 
and put your feet out, and all this water comes rushing at you, and I don't know what the hell to do, so I just wing it, and eventually you, know, you lose grip because you can't hold on when the boat goes fast enough. Are you supposed to, like, so like I've never done it before, but I would assume you have okay. to, like, tilt the board straight up, maybe. That's what I think, and I think you get that far, and then at one point you're supposed to press the water down with hmm. your kind of while you're straightening your body. It's it's one of those things where you can describe ice skating or whatever, but you have to do it. You, you just, just do push it. your feet to the side <laughs> And right, really but you also there's, there's angles and weight shifts and stuff. You, you can't even explain. You just naturally do it. It's like they try to tell so, you to stop when you're like you, you gotta turn sideways and then like try to touch your butt to right, the ice, and it's like that doesn't. Right. That's not how, how I do it. Right, <laughs> you put it different way in your in your head. Anyway, um, second time around, I did it, and I got up on the board, and I was like, I was just hanging on for dear life, like smiling at people, waving, just hoping I didn't trip, and eventually you just trip and you go down. Well. My other brother-in-law, we'll call him Jim, uh, he was out, and we were out in, like, the Chesapeake Bay, I don't freaking know, off Delaware, one, one of the bays off Delaware, mm-hmm. told me in later, and uh, he goes, yo, who wants to wakeboard, and I was like, I wakeboarded before, it was, like, eight years later, the one time I wakeboarded, so we tried, and uh, first time, I couldn't get up, and everybody's on the boat, and, you know, I'm like, oh, that hurt. Like, it really hurt my shoulder and everything. And I was like, just do it again, do it again, do it again. So I'm doing it, and I'm holding on, and I decided I wasn't going to let go. Like, that was my thing, even if it just dragged me in a weird way. Well, that's also that's also impossible. I think just at 20-some mile an hour, you just, your body lets go. Yep. So I can't do it. We tried three, four times. Now everyone in the boat, like, feels bad for me. I think you get like, that sullen <laughs> look on all their faces. yeah, yeah. yeah. Right, but they but they don't want to so uh, put me down. Yeah, they're so. Positive. No, they're like this. They're like, you can do it. Yeah, let's just do it one more time. And I'm like, I don't want to do it one more time. <laughs> but but everybody's being so nice. You have to. So we did it like a fifth time or a sixth time, and I'm just I'm just trying. But at this at this point, I have no grip in my arms. I'm just like I'm like this. And as soon as they take off, I'm like, oh no, I can't do it. <laughs> so eventually, like uh, the shame of failure kicks in and. You go over and everyone's still having a good time and everything. And I was like, ah, oh, this sucks. It's five days later now. I still have no grip strength because I like, uh, I like to do these things. But it was funny. I knew I messed up because I'm on the boat and I wanted to like Snapchat or like text someone or do something cool that I always do on my phone. And I was like, ah, oh, yeah. oh, I can't move. Has that happened to and you before? Like, I really hurt the first time I did it seven or eight years ago. And it lasted for like two or three days. But I feel like this is worse than I'm eight years older, and I didn't even get up. So I didn't have that, that feeling of victory to buoy me. Uh, so now I'm just like my lower back sore because it's like, it's like one of those activities. Like if you snowboard mm-hmm. for the first time in like eight years, like all of a sudden your abs hurt, your back hurts, your leg hurts. All the weird muscles you, you never used. Right, right, right. So that's I got I got olded up real quick, and uh, I can't play bass. I can't. If if a girl from the Unpanders wanted me to give her the old hand business, I couldn't give her a finger. I could whatever. I can't like I, it sucks. I can't do anything like huh. nothing. Oh, okay, that's interesting. I was no, going to really bring up. Sucks. I was going to bring up snowboarding because the first oh, time I I tried, I I felt repeatedly backwards landing on my wrists. Oh, uh, you did really? You were back falling? What? Yeah. Well, I I knew how to not fall forward, so I did. Okay. I was falling forward a lot because I was trying to hunch over to stay up. Hmm. Did your abs and stuff hurt? No, no. It's just that my hands did the did same you... thing that yours, ha- your hands did. That like uh, you get this wrist. like weird pain like right like uh, it's got to be in the wrist. Mm-hmm. Like that's got to be all the nerves get like kind of tense and puffed up. The same thing happens when you box if you box without wrapping your hands like, and you do it too much. Uh, yeah, and then you can't like you can't move these fingers Yo. first. Like the outer. Yeah, that's weird. Yeah. yeah, these are the ones that I have the most trouble with right now. Yeah, weird. Interesting. Hmm. I don't know the physiological thing behind it, but it's probably like the nerves are most sensitive or something. Yeah. I'm a Celebrity doctor. challenge. Me and Dan will snowboard against. Uh... Celebrity challenge. <laughs> <laughs> Celebrity challenge, everyone. It's that it's that time of day, folks. Bring in your family, bring in your loved ones. You're going to hear the one and only Celeb Challenge. You hear me? You dig me, folks? Well, here it is. The guy who plays Newman in Seinfeld and the guy who may have been called racist in Seinfeld, Kramer. Oh, Kramer. Kramer's called yeah, racist. Yeah, Michael Richards. Michael. Anyway, it's like a redemption for him, and it's also like a coming out party for Newman. 
me and Dan challenge him to a snowboard off. I they're, I think we they're getting kind of old. I don't know if they'll be able to do that. That's what. That's the only reason I'm challenging them. Come on. We'll, so we'll be on snowboards, but they can be on any medium, like a okay. inner tube, if they want. Like to a be. snowmobile. Snow. A snowmobile. <laughs> <That'd be so laughs> but we'd still beat them. I don't know, man. Snowmobile. I was just going with them adequate on a snowboard. Like I can go down a mountain without looking like a jackass. If you were going down a mountain on a snowmobile, I don't think you can turn because it's gonna roll and crush you. So they got to go. You pretty saying slow. Newman's using it because he's fat? I'm mm. saying they could both be using it because they. Seinfeld's an old show now. It's like 20 <laughs> or 30 years old, right? When did it originally air? 97? I don't know. I'm making that up, but it sounds like a real year. Early 90s is probably... Yeah, 97. 91. Okay. I'm going to say 91. Someone in I the comments, could... please... Clarify who was more right. Yeah. <laughs> Give them This is not Price new... is Right rules, by the way. Because that would not favor me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it would. Actually, no, wait, let's make it possible. <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> that shit. Uh, yeah, it would. Anyway, so if I do a lot of stretching, it's because uh, I tried to wakeboard, folks. Ooh, although I did paddleboard. Oh. Have you ever done that? No. That's actually. the one you stand on, and, and you have the, the paddle, like the long man's paddle. Mm -hmm. It's like a surfboard. So you can see the sharks good. as they come up around you. Uh, no, when I did it, it was real funny. Uh, I have no balance whatsoever. So I fell the first two times. I was just trying to stand up on it. And the third time, I just managed to just, the whole time I was just, my whole body was shimmying forward and backwards at the same time. And I was just holding on to the thing. <laughs> and uh, I was like 30, 40, now 50 yards away from where I started and like going into the ocean. <laughs> and everyone's like, turn around. I'm like, I'm just trying to balance. Don't worry about me. <laughs> so someone... Uh, Justin came out with a kayak, and he's like, can I just attach to your thing? And I was like, yeah, I, I've been fine, dude. <laughs> yeah. he, rode, he rode me back towards shore, and at that point, I figured out what I was doing. But like, but the whole time, I was just like standing still like a statue, just letting the tide take me wherever the hell it wanted. That's like the first time getting back on like skis. Like yeah, after same years, idea, you, I guess. You, get off, you have just... to get off the, the lift at the very top, and you're like, oh, yeah, my, yeah, God. Yeah. oh my God. Don't fall, don't fall. Please, oh my God, like... this is embarrassing. <laughs> oh, my God, that six-year-old girl is coming pretty quick. Oh, my God. <laughs> get away from me. Get away from me. She devil. <laughs> you're going to be the guy that pushed the little girl off the edge of the cliff. <laughs> <Just shut her. laughs> my baby. Uh, I don't know, man. She just fell. She fell. <sighs> I don't know if they, like, what's the legal precedent for, if, like, if, if they were to charge you for the murder, and you're just like, I don't she know dies. how to ski, they'd, like, they'd have to make you ski to prove, please put on the glove, and then you'd be like, <laughs> and the poles. <laughs> it doesn't fit, sir. Yeah. You must acquit. <laughs> Damn it! It wasn't him. I don't know how to ski, and you're just like, <laughs> somehow you ski, and you're convicted to life in prison. Oh. I guess... It'd be like some kind of manslaughter thing? Because, I mean, if you don't know how to drive, but you run someone over, that's pretty much murder, too. Hmm. Hmm. I'm not sure. I'm just saying. I don't know. Let's put it in the comments. Put it in the comments. Comment section Maybe below, all the folks. lawyers out there. All those voyeur lawyers it, who are looking at it on the show. Oh. <laughs> the war lawyers themselves. Hmm. <laughs> huh. 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 Ooh, refreshing. Feel better as we go. Yeah, that straw. Get it moving. Loosen up your blood vessels. Mm -hmm. Some good stretching going on. Actually, very tight. I'm an old man now. Yeah, it's sad because oh, your other... son's going to be athletic, and then you'll be like, "You're doing great," and you'll be 20 feet behind him, losing. No, I'm going to be the dad trying to uh, trying to beat him and everything still. And any time he does squarely beat me, I'll claim he's cheating or something. Hmm. Yo, whoa, whoa! Uh, I wasn't ready. <laughs> Dad, you said shoot it, shoot it ten times in a row. Yeah, I was gonna shoot it eleventh time. You shot it early. <laughs> did, you, did you? Did you do that all the time? Yeah, I love that. I love that. Uh, on the ice, part. right? Yeah. No, no, I, no, I know the reference. But I'm saying <laughs> that's that's literally my favorite thing to yell when I'm playing hockey with people. Shoot! You just yell it from anywhere, and people laugh, you know, or ignore you if you're on their team for more than like three games. Yeah. I do this thing where I kind of like grunt. I get excited. I'm like, oh, oh. 
And then, like, all the guys on the bench are like, what the hell's wrong with that guy? <laughs> and I, oh! And then it's... <laughs> that's a great save. That's a great save. <laughs> oh, I just, I just love what happened out there, folks. Uh, I guys, usually I'm just like, go to the guys. end of the bench and, and curl up. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Hmm. All right. Um. A little smirks. We did some smiles. I could do a little smirk a smile. smile. I got a quick one. Oh, you got one? Let's yeah. see it. So Let's I, I worked there setting up the microphones, and they because they have like a little like auditorium thing in the middle, so they have like one microphone, and they're trying to get a second one to work at the same time. So the group of IT people were conferring, and I walk up and I say, you know, you could do like stereo mix where you could have both playing through the stereo mix and you just listen to the stereo mix and then they're like all looking like oh it's a good idea and then at the end i said i podcast <laughs> <laughs> did they ask for the podcast or they just no. said thanks no they don't That's care awesome. about the podcast at all i'm finding like, that most people don't no no i uh, well think of it um six months ago yeah six months ago mm-hmm. would you someone says oh by the way i podcast you're like oh that's that's good for you yeah. That's what you think. You're like, that is, that's, job. I'm glad at you. Yeah. You didn't ask for the name of it. No, I know. I know, yeah. <laughs> I know. Good for you. <laughs> I guess most of the people don't believe that they, I guess they believe they're not going to be interested in whatever you're saying. Because I, right. I guarantee and I think... older people probably don't care. Mm. They know what they know and they don't need to know anymore. Hmm. Or they're not interested in the, uh, like, would you be interested in the podcast by 16-year-olds? Probably not. But if it was Right. Like, I mean, we don't know what it's about. I'm yeah. just guesstimating. Probably not. The odds are no. But if they were like us, I think us at 16 would be mm-hmm. a little more immature. We'd be talking about a lot more sexual right. things. But uh-huh. I think it'd uh-huh. still be, be interesting. Hmm. It would be. I, but I also think we're outliers as far as at 16, maybe? Maybe even I think now. So too, I think yeah. Maybe now, also. Mm-hmm. That's Definitely. a good point. Is your hair still hair still going out? Is this like a hair contest or something? I don't know. My um, barber died. The flood, uh, <laughs> the flood actually <laughs> took out the person's house that does my hair. So touchy subject. Yeah, touchy <laughs> subject. So we get. So we have to let wow. her come back to us to tell us when we can go. Interesting. Mm-hmm. That's weird. I didn't think of that. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, I was mean, picking up the pieces down there. Are people, uh, are they picking up them pieces? Uh, like, is everyone going back to work by now or no? Well, it's a weird dichotomy because you have most of the people at my work are fine. There's only like a few right. that actually had their houses just, and uh, but like certain sections of town are completely fine too. But other right. ones, like there's a mile away, if you go a mile north and a mile to the uh, east, <laughs> like that whole town is like elevation wise, like five feet below mine. Every single house. You just drywall, wood, floorboards, all sorts of stuff, carpet. All that stuff is like on the curbs. You're like dodging it in the street, going left and right, trying to weave through it. Can you give us a sad humanitarian thing? Is there like a, still posters of like lost kitten, lost dog, and you're like, you're like it's dead? I, I <laughs> Like you can say that to them, but like it's like, lady, it flooded for like days. I, I, I hear p- stories of people finding puppies okay. and kittens, and they're, like, displaced by the storm, but the way I hear it is, like, they just, they're, they're street <laughs> kittens, and they're, I need to find them a home, and then they take them in, and they steal them, essentially, because I think they were someone's pet. <laughs> <laughs> oh, like, like, they just got out of the house, they got in the storm, something happened, and now they're someone else's pet. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Interesting. Well, that's rough. Um, I'm going to pause here for station identification. This is not an envelope. <laughs> Do not look at it. <laughs> but it is orange. Uh, folks, would you like me to know a little something about what I do with my everyday life? Oh, everyday life? Is this a new segment? What's going on here? No, no, no. This is... This is... I'm a guy. A lot of you are guys. A lot of you could be girls, too. 51% That's not a problem. of the population is men. I thought it was 49 you think it's more female? Yeah. Maybe that's just the it doesn't U.S. feel that way. No, I feel like it's 51% female. I think that's the U.S. Yeah, really? Maybe it is more. I, I think it was 1% more female. No, I this probably changes every year. Okay. 
Do you think that's by what design? I'm, Do you think it's really not a 50% chance? It's really a 51% chance they become female? Because that would make more sense, right? I guess. Physio- physiologically. Physiologically. Ironically. Uh, Ironically. <laughs> How many syllables can make that word? Well, folks at home, <laughs> before I was sidetracked Sorry. by some, I apologize. Um, <clears throat> this can apply for men. It can apply for women. Sometimes you're just really feeling dirty. You know what I'm saying? Ooh, yeah, you know that feeling. Mm-hmm. Your tummy's on fire. Your fingertips get that weird electric buzz. Mm. The light behind your eyes intensifies. You've got the human horny. And the only cure? Trojans got it. What I've noticed here is Trojan makes a little condom called Ultra Ribbed. This bad boy expires in 2018. Let's just say it's not going to make it. (laughs) Well, folks, when it comes to protection from the other sex and from your own sex, nobody beats Trojan. They're triple layered. It's a latex. Most of it's hypoallergenic. It'll be totally fine. You put this bad boy on, you slip it on, you give it the old heave-ho, mighty, mighty mo, one, two, three, safety first. That's what I'm saying. It really is the finest brand, though. I mean, you can trust it. It's the highest rated contraceptive, and it's affordable. Folks, just go to your local store. I picked up an 86-pack for $39. Wow. 39 bucks. Um, I've probably gone through 40 of them. Let's say I'm kind of a lucky guy. Next week, I plan on using one with a girl. <laughs> That's great. Like I'm saying, folks, Trojan, <laughs> so now, the world's most trusted condominium on the market. Yeah. Give it a shot. I find them a little pricey, so I have a discount method that I use. It uh, comes in a roll, and all you have to do... <laughs> <laughs> I thought you we were going to say saran wrap. That's duct tape, dude. That doesn't sound safe at all. Oh. That sounds awful. Well, sticky side out. <laughs> Is that to catch any sperm to get out there? Yeah. Bring, a, them, bring them back? A natural delubricant. <laughs> <laughs> delubricant. Wow. Woo! Oh, oh we can't. Okay. <laughs> we can't use this one. <laughs> Maybe we can. Yeah. I don't know. I don't I know. Get a tear. There was a tear there. Yes, that's, that's natural lubrication. <laughs> lubrication. <laughs> yeah. That's part of the two-step process. That's the second Nature's step. Nature's lubricant. <laughs> yeah. mm. Now, for real, I have to find that condom I just threw. <laughs> Holy hell, we race. If someone I date finds a condom in this room. <laughs> yeah. That's <laughs> the fear, right? It's it's my greatest fear actually right now. <laughs> Once you move past a certain phase, you can't have <laughs> old random kind of playing around. around. Nope. nope, 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 nope. We moved way past random kind of playing around. Hmm. First question is going to be whose is this? <laughs> that answer becomes <laughs> extremely <laughs> extremely important. Yeah, and you Jorge, to... <laughs> <laughs> my oh. friend Jorge. <laughs> uh, I guess hmm. it kind of reverts back. Everything kind of is cyclic, right? So in like. You know, and when your years. parents would find it, right? yeah. you'd yeah. be all nervous. Oh, I hope my mommy doesn't find it. Now you're like, oh Christ, my girlfriend found it. <laughs> now you got my blame wife. Your my wife of 15 years. <laughs> <laughs> uh, blaming him, son. You have to hold yeah. on to these for a while. <laughs> and when I ask you for one, don't mention it. Ever. Yeah. Hmm. Awkward. Uh, no, I was well. No, I'm not gonna get make it awkward. Nope, we're good. We're good. Okay, we're good. So, is, I'm holding up an envelope again. So we're going on the next segment called. Uh, you do a scenario or a situation. Oh, that's interesting. I um. Huh. Whoa! <laughs> biceps. <laughs> this guy hitting the gym or what? Ooh. Sun's out, guns out. Yeah, Welcome that? back, sunlight. You see those? Man, Texas. Just I wish I could make an anti muscle so it would look smaller than even it usually does. But, but, man, that'd be like a. <laughs> huh. It is. It is interesting though. Then early cartoon world, that was literally the whole thing for strength. 
If you're strong, your bicep had like six biceps on top of it, and if you're weak, your bicep went in the wrong direction. Yep. Yeah, it went this way. The classic often noise. Time. Yep. Hmm. You know what that tells me? A lot of cartoon artists were glam muscle. <laughs> glam muscle fools. <laughs> Uh, do you need like a Drink. facial warm up? Do you need to do, like. <laughs> Someone's got to come over here and just <laughs> poke me here. Yeah. Here. Here. Oh. Here. Right over here. A little slappy here. Uh, Get me all awake. Does, do those condoms have model numbers on them? <laughs> <You're> an ISBN? <laughs> uh, I don't know. I did have expiration in like a lot number. I don't know what the lot stands for, where it's made. So they know who the culprit is? I don't know. Uh, <laughs> so I don't really have a situation or a scenario. I did. Oh, hit me. Okay. This is. I mean, this is a straightforward one. This is literally a uh, rock jock in Delaware radio question. So it's it's like cookie cutter. They probably heard it somewhere and just ran with it. Okay. It was question of the day, folks. Oh. Would you rather be really ugly and a genius, or really really hot? But you're a total idiot. And I was like, that's the dumbest question ever. I'm not sure. <laughs> I was like, let's see. So Ignorance is bliss. What are the odds? You, I mean, because you compare the two, they didn't really, say. really attractive. They didn't say what got up to. Right. Super attractive. So it's like, like it wasn't like super mile hot, what I gathered from it. It wasn't or it was? It was. I gathered that you were so attractive that you could probably make a living from it. And you're assuming but I also that gathered I'm male. Right. So it's a male's dream. Well, it's it's a question to anyone, but I'm asking you. Hmm. What would so you then have? I am a male. <laughs> mm -hmm. I think I, the odds are what? You, well, you have sex for like crazy amounts of so, sex. Well, you could also you could parlay that into jobs and stuff. Favors. Oh. You could just yeah. stand there and people could take pictures of you and they'd pay you. Sounds like a statue. That's called a statue. <laughs> yeah, she was very statue. She's very statue-y. There's a word for that. Yeah, statue-y. <laughs> Statu statutory. <laughs> very statutory. He's <laughs> hanging around younger women. Yeah. <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. So that that sounds pretty good, actually. And the right, other I thought one... it was the stupidest question in the world. Yeah. That was actually like, a good question. But the other, the other way, one sounds like you're really ugly. Like, no one's even going to throw... Like, people are afraid to throw rocks at you because the rock might come back deformed. <laughs> but you're really smart. Like, you're a genius. Oh. Uh, See, the, so the either, problem is you have to... Here's the thing. I, I looked at it this way. Um, first, I looked at it career-wise. You could probably make good money either way, right? Yeah, that's what if I'm thinking. really good enough. You could be a male model. I mean, sure. easier path to be in the model, I think. I don't know. If you're really a genius, you'll probably just play the market or do whatever. Like, really a genius. You'd find some way. Math. I don't know. And and you don't have to be seen by the public if you're really You smart. have to be, like, the number one genius. Like, you're the smartest guy in the world. Uh, let's give you a top ten. Sure. I'm not going to give you number one. You'd be bad with all the other geniuses, though. Some other geniuses yeah. would be able to be there. Yeah, but all those geniuses, all the dudes on the Discovery Channel that show up for all the interviews, the Chinese guy, uh... The no, I don't know what he is. Uh, gray hair dude, Asian. He has the long hair. He shows up on all the star shows, and then there's the the woman who like gets way too excited for stars, and then we realized it was a quasar. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? I, uh, <clears throat> I I understand the notion of who they are. Yeah, yeah. They all make enough money. You think? I don't know. They're all six figs. They're all six figs. Come on. You think? So I. I... I work in a very sciencey environment, and I see oh. all these people that essentially have flaws because they believe in science more than anything. I didn't say flawless. This guy's an asshole. <laughs> oh, so hold on, what are you saying? So there's people that I'm gonna I'm gonna say this in like a very general way is that most of the companies that are like engineering wise, they seem like they're searching for people who are personality-wise driven to just keep working and keep chugging and not ask for raises and focus okay. on the science of things. Like, if they can find one of those that. people, then they're golden. So, Ant worker. Yeah, essentially. Incredibly smart ant worker. Yeah. 
So if you're that smart, you might actually be driven to not work for money and try to achieve something, but you can still fail at that. So that would really crush you, right? Are you saying like Newton? I guess smart. I don't know. Like one of the smart come up with a new theory. What about like well, uh, like Turing? Like, well, like didn't they? Well, but didn't Newton fail and a lot of these other guys fail because their their theories aren't accepted for like fifty years. By then they're dead, aren't they? That's another thing. It's like being an artist. Like you, you don't reap the benefits of anything you do until later. Most well, then, most then again, that says a lot of what you want in your life. Sorry to say to the podcast, but Dan here wants immediate gratification <laughs> in his lifetime. Instantaneous gratification. <laughs> How do I want it <clears throat> right now? I'll be wearing an ultra ribbed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, Sorry to get on. Um, <laughs> but uh, huh? What were we talking about? <laughs> it's harder to get off too. It's oh, boring. but if you're anyway. the, if you're the <laughs> smartest guy in the world, you can make a bunch of money. But that's not going to that's not shit. That's not going to be what drives you. You're going to want to be like the forefront of something. But then you'd still be teaching well, these also. idiots who don't believe you. So you're like. You're talking to the male model who's getting laid all the time, and you're like, you're an idiot. You've got to do this or you'll die. And the male model's so like, So oh. what you're saying is the male model will be happier. He'll be happier, yeah. So I think I'll pick the male model. Interesting. Now, he's dumb as hell, so he doesn't even know he's reaping benefits, too. He's pretty happy, but he's not necessarily happier than everyone else. I'd rather be the sensory right? guy, because... Yeah? Mm. You like that pleasure? <laughs> Did you feed getting fuzzy or something my feed getting fuzzy it's uh no it's okay yeah. oh no wait a second i got a connection right. problem hold on oh. while i try to get the call back you're still you're still there do you want to here or now well you hate breaking the episode I up or not breaking it up yeah you need a pause all right i'm okay i'm good though i'm good i don't need no you're you're still fuzzy though like really fuzzy like you look like less than what's under 240 188p that bad, huh? Is it? Yeah, I think I... Yeah. My, I see you okay. I could keep going. Yeah, so does that mean it's my connection or yours? I have no idea. It's probably mine. It's probably the upper Hold on. <clears throat> it could be. Oh, connection. Here we go. We're getting back. All right. We good. Okay, we're You're good. You're back. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to have my address on the back of that, but shit. <laughs> I got to <laughs> make sure I got that out. Pause and... Found him. Double pause. <laughs> Triple pause. <laughs> mm -hmm. huh. mm. Okay, there we go. Uh, well, folks. Ooh. That's smart. Ooh. Let's bring what? it back to the word of the day. Actually, What's the word of the day? words of the moment, actually. Cause... Holy crap! Because uh, it's copyrighted. <laughs> yeah, I think it is copyrighted. Plus, I like word of the moment more. Or word of the podcast. Ooh. I actually have two. So Let's I... hear one. <clears throat> I came up. I just said one. <laughs> you can give me both. I don't care. I was just being a dick. <laughs> I said, uh, I, I came up with this today. So I was thinking about, like, forecasting. Like, before you cast, you have to forecast. So it's kind of like foreplay. So before, sure. you, before you podcast. So it's got to get, you got to get ready for the podcast, which I forgot. I was going to tell you to get into it, get into the zone, say all the words you can't say, and spit it out. So instead of forecast for weather, it's mm -hmm. forecast before you podcast? Mm-hmm. Interesting. Did you make it up or it's real work? I made it up. Oh, we have to make up these words? No, no, no. This, I'll just oh, okay. accept you this just one because I, I don't want to lose it because it's so good that I... I kind of like, I, I like it. I like, I like it. I like that you don't look... You want to keep it forever and it's important to you and everything else and I just think it's okay for the folks at home. <laughs> it's just average. Yeah. No, no, I, I like it. I do like it. got to use good. it in a sentence but I'm not going to. <sighs> well, the real word I was going to say... Uh, obsequious. Do you know what obsequ obsequious means? Uh, impossible to see through. I'm not sure. No, that's uh, what word are opaque. you speaking of? Opaque. Yeah. Opaque. Thank you. Obsequious is like servitude to like an a, like a ridiculous level, like you're beyond indentured to somebody. Really. Mm hmm So what I was thinking about those scientists that are working really hard for a goal and not getting paid oh. for it, they're obsequious because they're they're not working for the money which the company should be paying them. Makes sense. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. I like that word. Yeah. Well, is that the proper definition? Like, is it like, like to the point of foregoing your own um, future health, future 
livelihood for the good of the greater good of mm-hmm. so and so or X. Hmm. Interesting. Excessive <clears throat> servitude. Let's soak in there. You got another word? You're thinking about a word? No, I took a, a BDSM test, like the bondage, whatever the was, yeah, was, sex test. Oh, no, I was just bored. I was looking at someone. Someone I follow posted. They're like, "This is my results," and I was like, "What are you?" And they're like a lawyer and a something. And I was like, "This is stupid." So I took the test, and you said like servitude of some weird amount, <laughs> and, the, and and I was like, maybe it's for <clears throat> regular questions and make you see if you're into different things like sexually. Like, whoa! Like I was bored sitting there. I was like, let me take this test. And it was like, do you uh, like getting yelled at and demeaned incredibly <laughs> during sex without respect and something? And it was like a really long sentence. And I was like, no, nah, not really. True false. <laughs> I was like, no. <laughs> and then and then like it would be like one of the other questions like, do you love watching people have sex without their consent and something? And I was like, nah, not really. And then like I realized that it wasn't so much a quiz so much it was just the definitions of the sexual perversions being asked. <laughs> so I was like, I was like, well, that didn't do anything for me, you know. I was like, you know. But one of them was like, "Do you wish to do, to uh, obey willing servitude to a master and you know be whatever?" And I was like, uh, "Not really." <laughs> the and problem I was is like, when you say it, I have picture somebody wearing like a leather mask, like behind <laughs> oh, their own exactly. screen, being like, oh. "Oh, please say yes, please say <laughs> yes." yes. yes. <laughs> but like, like a little like red pin like drops down on your house when you say yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yes. <laughs> but it just seemed like the questions were like usually you try and rope someone in. Like, do you want to get? whipped or something it's like whoa some girls will be like yes this was like do you want to obey your master and be servitude toward the highest like degree and I, was like, <laughs> <laughs> I was like this is this is a bit much and i was like i don't know who's answering these questions yes but they're already there they don't need the quiz you know what i mean have you ever heard of that website where you fill out a form of what you like and it's directed oh, at somebody oh, oh, oh. and it it obfuscates it doesn't tell them what you like but it, they answer the same quiz, and then the uh-huh. answers that match up, it'll mm-hmm. like summarize it and just say you both like this, which you didn't know well, about like, before. It's almost like Tinder, isn't it? I mean, it's not about meeting people. It, it's uh, somebody you already know. So you, like, oh, okay. you'd be married to the person, and you're just like trying to find their inner like desire. So naturally, uh, I uh, I checked yes on everything to see if what would you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so sweet. So, yeah. Oh, that's good, dude. But she didn't like any of it, so. <laughs> Wait, wait, so she checked she no one? She checked no one ever. Because she, yes knew, she knew what Damn. I would do. Damn. <laughs> smart. Damn. She's that a smart one. That is smart. That is smart. It was smart on your part. I wouldn't even thought of that. <laughs> yeah. oh, man. You got to find it out. <laughs> Ooh, good time. You were like, literally, you were like setting up the uh, home run pitch. Yeah. Like, I'm right right like, down the, the middle. The pitch never and comes. sat there, sat there, and they were just the pitcher never threw one. Not even one. <laughs> yeah. Interesting. Oh. Uh, weird. The bulk. Take your base. Yeah, uh, I know we don't always do this, but this is a quick celebrity shout out. Who shout out? The challenge. Yeah, this or shout this out. Is a shout out. No, no, just a shout out to our boy. I think he listens to the podcast. I can't prove it. Um, either way, he'd be welcome to appear on it once, whatever. Um, Reese Hoskins of the Phillies. You know what he's done? No, I don't know what he's done. So he's been in the big leagues for thirty-eight games now. 39 tonight. I, I don't know. The game's not over. He's hit 18 home runs. Wow. It's never been done in MLB history, to my knowledge. I think the, the next... When he hit his 15th, it was like 31 games in or something. And the next closest was like the person... Like, you know... I want to say Ted Williams. or I don't know. They, they have all these names. Baseball stats are crazy. But there were like three Hall of Fame players who... Uh, who hit their 15th home run by like their 58th at bat, their 60th or 60th game, 58th game, 54th game, something like that. And he's like 31 games. And I was like, whoa. Huh. So I guess the stadium is packed. And what's the record? There's 162 no, games, right? So like the number of home uh, runs in a season. Uh, yeah. Do you know the, the controversy? I'm looking it up Avoiding. as we speak. I can see the light just like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the Roy of it. what McGuire and uh, yeah. Barry Bonds. Iron Sosa, no Sosa. Sosa. Home run record. I'm looking it up. I thought it was like idea. 72 home runs. It's two. I think it is 72. People are like calling us idiots, but we're baseball guys, so. It's funny. Record not... chase 70. 
Sosa finished with 66. Oh, that was breaking the record. So, yeah, probably ended on, uh, Jesus Christ, I don't need the whole story. <laughs> yeah. Just, just tell number me people. fact I'm looking for. Yeah, right? <clears throat> Let's see. Oh, it looks like it's just 70. Hmm. I know it was 72 as well. Weird. Huh. We talked about the, um, my favorite record, right? The, uh. Rookie goal record? Um, ice hockey? Yeah. Mm. Uh, I don't know that I... Well, it could be DePita. I thought we talked about it. I just in talked about game, someone. Or is the whole season? No, no, no. Whole season. Rookie season. Nope. Ooh, I don't know who it is. Who might, who might it be? He played in 81 games. His name's Timu Solani. You want to guess uh, how many goals he scored? Here. Oh, he was, up, he was up around like... One for one. Close. It's like 80-something goals. Nah, 72 goals Ooh. his rookie year. Either way, that's my favorite uh, hockey record. Right? Cause it's, well, because it's not a Gretzky record. The Gretzky ones, we did discuss the Gretzky ones. I remember being like mm-hmm. 212, I think, or something. Yeah, two, I think it was actually 215, but the season you were talking about was 212. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Some ridiculous amount of points. But right. Solani, didn't they have fewer games back then? I think he did 80 in that season, or 81. It's amazing what they could do. I don't know if it was like an easier way to score back then. Or like goalies were easier. I think goalies, goalies were worse. I imagine be, they didn't even have butterfly, did they? I don't know that they did or not. So, kind of coming in. It's easier to slip them drugs beforehand. <laughs> well, a lot of players will get drunk like the day before. Like you know what I mean? I guess sports have changed in general that way. There's also like the delta from being like a regular athlete uh-huh. to a pro, and then a pro who can actually make money in their sport. Because, like, all the, like, my grandfather, when he, he played pro ball, he didn't make any money playing pro oh, ball. Oh, wait, I didn't know he play, played pro ball. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That's pretty cool. What position, you know? Uh, I think it was, like, a shortstop. All right, word. Look at that. We got we got some shortstop blood yeah, yeah. here. So he, uh, up, I don't like figure it out. ball, though. But, <laughs> he, like, they, they never made any money. So I feel like the moment, like, your sport takes off and you start actually making millions, like, when all the TV deals came in, that's when more people come in to saturate that market, and they pick the best of that best. Yeah, and then it's if you're a star, that, then you just start pounding whatever drug of choice you'd like. Right, you have make to. Millions. Well, not only that, look at it this way. Uh, Law of Averages says that, A, more people will be a, approaching it. B, with those more people, the freakish athletes are the ones that are going to stand out, the naturally good ones. Mm-hmm. And B, of those naturally good freakish ones, the ones that work the hardest – and spend the most time on their craft would probably be the ones picked. And while that rate is going up, you also have the rate of money that's given to them. So your yeah, grandfather... Like eight-year-olds I, being like money thrown at them so they could become freakish. Right, but that helps them when you think about it because if you're an eight-year-old who has to worry about regular stuff or even a 28-year-old who has to worry about regular stuff and have another job, they wouldn't be as freakish at that. They're never going to be able to master Right, because you're you have another job. You, you literally you, you have school, you have a home, you have a life, wife, kids. But if they paid you four million dollars, don't have to worry about another job. That's for damn sure. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can forego your immediate, your far distant future for four million dollars, right? Yeah. Plus, it I mean, it actually the returns might actually be there. Someone right. like uh, uh, you're gonna like this name, oh. like a Billy Leno. Billy. <laughs> Oh, man. He Buffalo had, Zone. <laughs> he had, like had an Buffalo? amazing season, and then I, I don't know what his point playoff was. In the playoff time, yeah, he was almost like a he was only point-per-game player. Almost, and uh, he actually did it against Buffalo. Oh, that's why. With the Philadelphia Flyers, and then in the offseason, he was a free agent or a restricted and or whatever he, he was. to Buffalo. Buffalo for big bucks. For $27 million over six he years. Scored, he scored like one goal in his first year. <laughs> yeah. He did terribly, and he got let go after three years. Not a good number. So, mm-hmm. yeah, so that's like $9 million a year. It's pretty good money. Yeah. I, I, for, sure. For I'd a, score an accidental goal. One, Do you think one or two score, good seasons. Let's say um, you get forced to play in the NHL right now. <clears> and forced. Coach, yeah, and the coach will play you every game. You don't, you're you not getting all the ice time in the world, but let's say you're third-line player. At my current skill level, yeah. Yeah. I mean, you also... You're shitting yourself, gonna, yeah, because... Well, well right, but you're also playing every day, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Oh, that's probably it. Oh, you're supposed to mute that oh, shit. I know. 
come to bed. Yep. Uh, this is all you know, close. But let's say you uh, you have to get played. He's not going to cut your time. The coach, whatever. The fans can scream all they want. You're not necessarily getting paid buku bucks. And you play every game. You're getting better because you're also playing with pro athletes. You're probably training with them. You're eating better. And you, you don't have a day job. You're playing hockey. Mm-hmm. Do you think by the end of the year you'd be able to score a couple goals? What do you got in you? By accident. Come on. You're scrimmaging in front of the net. Let's say you survive. I don't know if you'd survive, but I think I would get a couple. I would hope. A couple. Yeah, yeah, a couple. Yeah, you hanging out in front of the net, getting some garbage, driving. digging it there. Do you think you? Do you think your drive and hunger would be greater than a lot of them because you're like an average Joe? I gotta check out these pipes again. <laughs> no, Rounds, I, folks. I feel right? like your your muscles only have such a limit. Like when you're okay, so you wouldn't be able to. You get halfway. You probably wouldn't even get but halfway. Not, you get a few games in before you're like. Sure, but it's not all muscle. I mean, look at Wayne Gretzky. He wasn't the muscle machine. Here, let's see what the answer was. So you got to hope to be Wayne, uh, who the the rookie was, who scored the most goals. No, that was points. the Solani. Yeah, Timo. No, no, no. Um, I'm saying Wayne Gretzky was not the most muscular guy. Yeah, he's a skinny little little guy. He's a he scored cockroach. 92 goals one year. You don't think you could? Get a couple that he was going to get? You know I don't know. you got to know. You have to be able to just be able to see the ice and not be able to focus on anything else. So you got to be able to avoid people. So you were talking about muscles. Why don't you just work on your focus on vision? Can you not <laughs> learn vision, I guess? I don't, I don't know. know. That's. I suppose if someone gave you the shot to say you could make this work, but you have no skill right now, <laughs> they give you one year. You, well, I mean, you... if you just continuously skated, like if they gave you the option right. just... You're, and you're training with professionals mm-hmm. for free. It's not like, you know, it's up to you how hard you work and everything else. And I know your body has limits, but I imagine you could become an almost serviceable, like you'd be the worst player in the league still, but you'd almost be at their level because I think you rise to your level too. And then people would be oppressed, impressed by you, not oppressed, impressed. <laughs> oppressed by you. <laughs> the unpanders go dark real quick, yeah. don't they? They'd be... They'd be impressed because you'd have a huge. It'd be like Rudy. Like Rudy was undersized. Bit, and yeah. No one, and he probably sucked. Everyone knows that, but he yeah. did play. You know. Not a heart. I didn't see Rudy. So I'm just going with what I think happens. You weren't. He makes a play. Uh, you were, why? Who? Who's we, class? We watched this. We had the guy come at in high school. <clears throat> I know. I didn't go. You didn't go to that because that was the one of the most. No. That was a crowning moment of people going nuts. Really? Yeah. I always thought Rudy was dumb. <laughs> <laughs> all, the, all the followers just clicked unsubscribe. We love Rudy. <laughs> yeah. I just never, I don't know, I didn't like Rudy's. I just well, remember I they never gave saw us popcorn. It. Like, we were in the gym. They gave us popcorn to watch the movie. <laughs> it was the entire school. and like, Everyone was throwing popcorn yeah, except for me. At apparently. that scene, everyone was just going nuts. And there's, oh, every, ooh, that was great. Is this at the ring ceremony I didn't go to and apologize for? Apologize? You got some backstory? You know, no, um, <clears throat> I never got a class ring because I couldn't afford them at the time, right? Really? At, yeah, at the third year, everyone was clapping their boxes at brother. Oh, that's dumb. I hate that stuff. Wait, did you remember this? I don't everyone remember was clapping. That, but that's dumb. It, caused, <clears throat> it is. And it caused a ruckus. And once like 10 kids start doing it, 30 kids doing it, now the whole school's doing it. And they're clapping the ring boxes at the guy, and he couldn't talk over them. And uh-huh. it was embarrassing for him. So there was an assembly the next day. And the entire school was invited, and he just laid into everyone on how um, it was embarrassing. You're better than this. You're going to be men of the world. We're teaching you to be men. How could you do this? And I raised my hand, and I was like, I just want to apologize for the rest of the class. And he was like, thank you. You're a jerk. And I was like one of the only people who didn't go to the ring ceremony <laughs> at all. I was just laughing with all my friends. Like, ah. <laughs> oh, you like that? You like that? Uh, that's classic Nick, folks. Classic Nick. It's one of the things you forget. Like I don't remember the the, the father, brother, whatever for that that was speaking, but I'm pretty sure nobody liked him. That's my he assumption. Was, he was heavy set. Starlight Express. <laughs> Starlight Express. <laughs> you know what Starlight Express was? No. If you Google Starlight Express, it's like a, I want to say it's a, a musical about a little boy who comes into realization that he can be a man or something. I don't know, but it's 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 got some overtones. So it, let's just say. <laughs> And one time he, he made a whole bunch of people. I don't remember if it was in my homeroom or somewhere else. And he was like, let's just listen to the music, gentlemen. 
and he played like the beginning of this song, Starlight Express, <laughs> and everyone was like, oh, oh no. no, and he like, and he wanted us to listen to the whole song. What's interesting is I think everyone has this innate ability to know when other people in the room are not enjoying a medium, whether it's TV or music. If someone's in your car and you're playing a song and they're not enjoying it, mm. you can feel them, their, their energy. Yeah. But anyway, he did not get that at all. He really <laughs> thought we were all digging it. He made us listen to the whole song. I feel like it was like five and a half minutes long. I could feel like uh, maybe like a like a chubby, heavy set priest or brother or whatever. His yeah, name was. he, he is. Just, like kind of like lean towards the window and he's looking out the window <laughs> and he's Star- singing to himself. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> that was him. Oh. Uh, memories of a past that didn't exist. Mm-hmm. Never gotten to. Nope. Mm mm mm. I <laughs> so I guess we'll where I don't even know where we were in the topic chain. I'm sure there's a missed question or a story back there. I think we should Let's move on to the main topic. Yeah, I was gonna say wrap it up because of a text I got, but let's nope. I'm gonna play the gamble the other way. You're gonna we could pause it for the ten seconds that you're gonna be <laughs> I'd be told no. But where is that? There's a condom. I don't know. It's behind the computer. <laughs> uh, Just, what does it do behind a computer? It, it's hard to explain. <laughs> it was our sponsor. <laughs> oh, life's funny sometimes, folks. Are you sure you're good? Because we, I mean, we could dry cut it off. <laughs> no, let's just do a little bit of the main topic. We'll see how I'm it curious feels. Curious what the, the text, the text said. I'm sure the listeners are curious too. Uh, <clears throat> Okay, I was calling you, but now I'm going to bed. Hmm. And there's, it's weird. She never, she never's like, oh, where are you? I need to know where you are. It's usually like, <laughs> see ya. So the fact that it was like, where are you? I'm, I was going to bed. Wink, wink. Well, are there winks in there? No, that's why I'm like, if I go up now, it's too, it's too late. My gamble's over. I think you lost your gamble, yeah. I think so. And I, well, then, what was, think of this then. What's the point of the text? Make me feel bad? Probably. Right? <laughs> well, you know what? Podcast away, folks. <laughs> I'm pod friggin' tastic. Yeah. We should do a podcast what? about women, and then I don't know that we can. Never let them, yeah. never publish it. Yeah, never, never publish ever. Because mm. all the women in the world are going to be like, oh, what did they say? Oh, we can't say that. <laughs> can't say that. Can't say that. These these men just won't pander, will they? they? Stop. They're just like all the rest of them. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What's funny is, um, do you think there's more women like that, or men who think like women? They belong in the kitchens. <laughs> like you know what I mean? Like the the overly sexist guy who like, what does she know about sports? <laughs> like you know, they're just like way over the top, where you're like, mm-hmm. So the conversion is, is men who feel like women should be in a certain place, and then the other one's women who believe men should be in a certain place. Right. Do you think there's more of one or the other? Actually, I bet you there's more men who are sexist, like super sexist. I'm talking overly sexist, not not like a little bit, like over the top. I think so. I think men would be more outwardly sexist, whereas women might just be quietly, passively sexist. Right. Well, there are some that are just like... They just you know, yeah, they want a certain thing and they're just hoping and hoping and hoping for it. And when it doesn't happen, their lives get crushed and they have to you know how, adopt a bunch you know, of cats. Do, do you know <laughs> how I said I was listening to that Shock Jock radio mm-hmm. yep. in Delaware on my way home today mm-hmm. from vacation, folks? They had lesbians on and they were, this was entirely for the Shock Jock purpose. And I was totally listening the whole time because I was kind of enjoying it. Two lesbians... One used to date men. One never dates men, hates men. Okay. One that used to date men and everything was like, I'm, I love my new girlfriend. We've been together for two years, but she won't try new sex toys. Hmm. Which is whatever. Like, I don't know their relationship. New but sex toys? Heard, like, different ones? Or just well, in general. Sex toys in general. Okay. And the other girl's argument was, um, well, I don't use sex toys because they're too reminiscent of men. And I was listening, and I was like, what? And she's like, well, if you notice, sex toys are shaped like men, and I hate men. And I was like, whew, 
seems like a real winner here. A lesbian and a feminist. He's, right, and I don't care if you are, but like she's literally saying, I won't use an item that's semi resemblant of a man, which they all aren't, by the way. Aren't there like butterfly things and like yeah, whatever? There's, yeah. Yeah. So, and on top of that, she the didn't other want, way, lady. <laughs> she, <laughs> she didn't want to please her own, like, like, her significant other, the person she cares about most in her life. She didn't want to pleasure her more than she did want to be angry at men. <laughs> <laughs> like she was like she was like, mm -mm, I'm gonna show men, but really she's just showing the person she loved. She didn't care for her. And I thought it went on for like ten minutes, and they were trying to argue with her, and she's like, "What about what if one was shaped like a woman's parts?" And she's like, "We just don't need things to make uh, us feel better. I know what I like, and I think she should like what I like, which is nothing." <laughs> it was like such a. I was like, oof. I can't imagine being in that relationship. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, I feel like that woman who is with her would want to leave. Right? Wouldn't it's almost like, come on. And I get people hate men. Like, cool. I, I hate men. I would never there's date a man. Douche, there's some douches out there. I wouldn't date a man. Would you date a man? I might. Nah. Right. <laughs> right. Right. Here's about right money. Yeah. No. <laughs> it's about money. <laughs> I did a show today. Yeah. But, but I would never be, like, so against one or the other that I would, like, it would control my life like that, you know? Yeah, I just assume that something happened in the past. Or something weird. Do you know what she said? Hold on. What did she say? Uh, I didn't... I wish I caught... It was, like, a 30-second blip where they were cutting in and out. Mm -hmm. And I think she said when she was younger, she walked in on a relative of hers who was naked, and she immediately closed the door and said it was the most disgusting thing she'd ever seen, and she would never date men, and that's where her... Anti male started. Ugh. How crazy is that? How old do you think the person was? Like over 100? She sounded. No, she sounded. No, no, like I mean, 27. like the person he. She uh, sounded. No, I think it was like a, her father or her brother or something. Hmm. I don't even think they were doing anything to himself. I think she just saw a penis and was offended by it. It was disgusting. Offensive. I think that's where her memory blacked out and then. Uh huh. The maybe. The tree took over. Could be. Could be. Anyway, folks, uh, if you are a lesbian, a gay, a straight, and in between, use whatever the hell toys you want, folks. Whatever you're deciding. It's fine with us. And choose whatever the hell you want in the bedroom. I don't care. Yeah. You can use shoes. You can use <laughs> no prophylactics. You can use flip flops. You can use stilettos, sea turtles. Baby. Stilettos. You like stilettos? No, that's some of that. I'm just saying, it could be your fetish. Hold on, it's weird that you it came out of nowhere. You said shoes. That's... Yeah. <laughs> I think I know up. exactly what you're thinking because I have that fetish too. Yeah, I know. <laughs> you seem like cumbersome. Yeah. And then that's the first thing you gotta take off. I don't I don't know how you really get into the sack with stilettos on. That just feels painful. I've made love on rollerblades, I'll put it that way. Mm. While wearing them. Sorry. I wasn't like sitting on them. I was wearing. Them. <laughs> you like the the you feel pile? of rollerblades. <laughs> oh, <laughs> like... yeah. That's what gets me. Uh, oh, those ABEC five bearings. <laughs> oh, <laughs> so smooth. I just greased them. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, so we're gonna move on to our next topic here, which is the main hey. topic of the day. And hey, -o. oh, hey, yeah. folks. Get ready to get dirty. We got something for you called medicin, mm, med medication, medication and drugs. Damn it! Should we try that again? We got some new topic for you. It's called medication and drugs. I, I wrote it. Medicine <laughs> Main groups. topic of the day. We're all stoked for it, folks. None of us are just kind of counting down the hours and minutes and seconds, and we're fading. Oh, yeah, we're fading out. We're fa okay. Let's so, do it. have you ever done it a challenge, does. like the cinnamon challenge, where you try to eat a spoonful of cinnamon? No, I did saltines. Saltine. How many like saltines eight. in a? Like you're supposed to get eight. I got like four, and I couldn't breathe. I was like, Ugh. what's the trick? You have to supposed to eat them without water in a minute or Correct. something. It, yeah, it's a it's a timer. I couldn't do it. Even close. I got to like even halfway of what the record is, and I was like, mm -hmm. yeah, impossible. There's also like the uh, the milk one, a gallon yeah. of milk, right? This your stomach can't hold. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So there's 
there's inherently toxicity in everything, right? Like you can't physically eat certain things. Not water, pal. Not water. Strange you should pick that up. Oh, shoot, really? <laughs> oh, here yeah. we go. Let's dive in. Yeah, so you actually can be... Uh, to- you can die from drinking, I think it was three or four gallons of water at a time. Oh, is this the frat thing? Uh, well, there's... I think there is a fret thing with Hazing alcohol, and then people yeah, yeah, yeah. try to make it up with water to balance out the alcohol. But there's also well, I, I was under the impression that they weren't allowed to use alcohol because they were recently in trouble, so they were hazing with water. Hmm. So they were like, chug, rookie, chug, pledge, whatever they call people. I was never in a frat. And they were like screaming at him, and uh, I think they made him chug so much water that he had a brain embolism, and he huh. died from water. This happened like seven, eight years ago in a... Somewhere in PA, I thought. I don't know. Huh. It was like a big deal because, like, you can die from water. Yeah, you can die from water. Hmm. I don't know what Man, the symptoms would be. He had a seizure, I believe. That all your like there was just so much water. I guess his maybe his brain was drowning. I don't really know the scientific term for it. I think that would mess with your like salt balance in your body, and then like things would start maybe. going crazy. Right. right, like muscle disorders, and then blood would start seeping into weird spots. Right, blood would yeah, blood would do some weird stuff too. Thins out, I guess. I don't know. Yeah. So yeah would... Well, Andy hmm. Andy Warhol actually was. He died in the hospital, and they say hmm. that he gained something like twenty pounds of water because they had misjudged his IVs. Like they kept giving him IVs, so he went in at like one hundred and sixty pounds and came out like one hundred and eighty pounds, dead. And they, they say you can't gain that much weight unless you're, that much water is put into you. So they say instead of the surgery or whatever he had, he actually died from the amount of IV fluids that they gave him. So nurses killed him, not doctors. Interesting. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. Nurses are the bad guys in hospitals. Is that <laughs> yeah. what you're saying? <laughs> unless they All the nurse them. listeners. Yeah. That's probably it is interesting, though. Of the so that, population. Probably. So what you're saying is even good things can be toxic? Is that what you're getting at? I think so. Mm. Yeah, like Any, sugars, anything all the sweets and being a diabetic. Everything in moderation, right? I mean, maybe that's a good right. good metric. It's probably a good metric for all things, even mental. You can't go so deep into something. Like, I imagine it's there's got to be a sickness for people on, like, weightlifting forums on, like, page 832 of should I use carbs before I run and then work out versus a guy who says it's always proteins after a run, bro, but before you run. And then, like, or after a workout, but before you run. And there's, like, page, like, 14 of the article. Your triglycerol level gets too high. I notice I gain always 0.4% more muscle mass when I run after a protein shake. And, like, if you just go too deep down any road, I was picking weightlifting for whatever reason. It, it seems like there's a sickness involved. There's always, like, a contradiction and people just ignore it. Right. Well, it's it's a mental. You get you're so deep. You don't see when you're that deep. You can't see the yeah. wider array of things. You the always see the, the the bodybuilders with the the shake. You know, they have some sort of protein in it. They've got some cre- like creatine, and then they've got something right. else. And you know, if you think that like, I can always envision them like drinking from it after they pump some iron or during, but you never see them like eating anything else. Like somehow that. I wouldn't say it's a myth because it's probably somewhat true, but you never see them eating like a steak mid mid exercise. <laughs> like they don't have like a piece of jerky. Steak. Like <laughs> like the key oh. to getting muscles is eating beef jerky while you exercise. Like you never have a piece of jerky you sticking out. Might you might find them though. Yeah, I'm yeah, not hundred percent sure because there's gonna be someone in the in the in the, the questions post that says I eat eggs in between my reps. You know what I mean? we will be like, well, okay. They down them with a shot of beer or something. Straight egg out of a blender. I don't know. I just feel like anytime you go too deep into something, you... It gets weird. Because you're not... Um, I, I want to say shallow enough, but what's broad? You don't have a broad enough array of intelligence or viewpoints to make sure you're not falling into a pitfall. Like, I don't know. Like, like you're so deep of weight building. Right, you're, you're in it too deep. I don't know. It becomes religious. You, you become too boiled down to one point and all your points are kind of in that one thing so that the rest of your personality the rest of your life is kind of flat yeah well you're you're trying to culminate all the i guess the the myths that you hear like it's a science of how you build muscle 
but no one really knows. Hundred, right? People know, but they don't know, and it's probably different for every person too, which makes it yeah always change. Different body chemistries and stuff, and you're right. the like it's not like an instantaneous thing. People build mm-hmm. muscle over time, and it's just like you're providing your body with these things. You just don't know really the proportions that you need, so people just go overboard. Right, a hundred percent agree. What I think, though, is we're getting too into bodybuilding because I did not plan on talking about bodybuilding. I was just picking bodybuilding at random because anything people seem to get too absorbed in, even if you go deep enough on hockey forums or something and you're like – they're talking about guys who are coming out of high school right now who score – have a Fenwick score of like 2.83 and their their offensive zone draws are always resulting in a 1.94 back checkpoint and you're like – you're like – Whoa, we better relax. This guy's in high school. We, he, <laughs> yeah. uh, he might start a JL into anime and quit hockey, man. I don't know. Yeah, it's his it's first fast. hockey game ever, and he's like, it's oh, my fast. gosh. He's yeah. got a, a, what, a Corosi score of like <laughs> one Corsi point. score off the <laughs> charts. I'm sure he does, and I'm sure whatever. But it's just people get too they get way too focused. Right. You become – you bring the piece of paper so far up to your face that you can't see the rest of the paper is mm-hmm. what I'm getting at. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to have a little – a minor sidebar here. So mm-hmm. I was looking at like these creatine drinks in my local smoothie place, and they mm-hmm. say um, like they have flavors on them, and one was like berry, which is generic. Uh, I think another one had uh, like champagne on it, and they like they had a bunch of names that were like some of them were trademarks, some of them were like yeah, asterisks. Just... So they had a bunch of different symbols to say. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like, yeah, they they're oh. The... Taurine always has like a cross and something. Yeah, yeah, yeah I know what you're talking like, about. Like this yeah. doesn't actually help you. And then like the one that had champagne on it was like, this is not actually champagne. So I was like, <laughs> spell it for the muscle. Yeah. Man. Why would you give your drink that flavor? And, and then, then <laughs> also have to have a, a cursor that <laughs> yeah. says like, please, this also is not just champagne. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I just oh, thought that was weird. Man. That was probably my smirker smile for the day. I was just mm. like, what the hell? You gotta tell I'm the just, people. I just gotta. I had to get it off my chest. Because it was there and it was going to get lost. I don't want it disappearing because it's for you guys. It's the ether. Mm. Mm-hmm. It's going to disappear back in the ether. But on the flip side, so people are trying to do these things with maybe overdosing, overdoing uh, methods for betterment, I guess you'd call them. Mm-hmm. So the strange thing is that, so this is going to get deep here. Let's go a little deep. Okay. So cancer, it's a terrible Have disease. Um, I've heard of it. And, you know, the the cures to cancer, one of them's like chemo. Yeah. So it's like the, it's intense. Poison. Yeah. It's poison for poison. your body. It kills the cells sure. that are rapidly being cancerous. They're generating, right. you know, regenerating themselves really quickly. So where do you think that came from? How do you think they came up with chemo? Do you know or are you asking? I do know, actually. Okay, hold on. Let's see. I feel like it was an accident, right? Yeah. Okay. Hmm. Someone had too much cleaning solution in their blood. <laughs> uh, no. no, you could think it been maybe it could have been like a cocaine or some sort of like accidental drug. No, it wasn't going there. But God, so but no, it actually it became uh, it came noticed during World War II is that people would get hit with mustard gas, mm-hmm. and then the people who would survive the mustard gas they'd see that their levels of like. Uh, I think white blood cells or something, like something that would rapidly grow, became mm-hmm. diminished, but they survived it. So they mm-hmm. just had doctors on the side that were like, wait a second, like, we could use this towards something. And then, like, 30 years later, they developed chemo out of mustard gas. So something that was that intended poison. to kill somebody could became then... a heal. Mm-hmm. Hmm. That's interesting, I guess. <clears throat> so they're really inflicting cures on well... people. Well. <laughs> So the Germans were the good guys. Yeah. Is that what we're saying? <laughs> Let's not get too deep on our our known uh, our known hatred Listener. of the Nazis here. <laughs> our Nazi hatred. Yeah. Should it be turned around? Were they really trying to heal people then with mustard gas? I don't know. It did go off on some spiral that I wasn't going to touch on, but okay. man, they did some crazy experiments to people just to I didn't see what wanna... their body would yeah. do. Yeah. Because I didn't, is that Goebbels, Goebbels, or, or that was Goebbels the general. Was who the was the advertiser. general? Right, 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 right. Then who was the um, scientist? They had a bunch yeah. of crazy scientists, just like, yeah. oh, some terrible things. I kind of want to go into it now that I'm thinking about it. Go ahead, because I don't actually know. So you're, I'm going blind. So there's like, they intentionally am- amputated people to figure out like if they could survive things. So they did physical changes. They right. did chemical things. 
they did Cash like and all that crap. Yeah, with different guns. Yeah, they like hit them with different like um, acids and stuff to see if it would you know do whatever. I don't know. It was terrible. So they hit them with like fire. They and then they would uh, like lack of oxygen. They'd put them in these chambers that would suck out all the oxygen, and then they'd see how long they could survive. Like Deadpool. Yeah, like, exactly. Like Deadpool okay. was in that oxygen deprived chamber. Yeah, yeah. So they like trying to test like what the human body can endure. Mm-hmm. Like some crazy, crazy stuff that really, I mean, they're much more, uh, I guess, sane and I wouldn't say comforting, but like better ways to do it. But they didn't care because they had subjects. Right. Like, well. I guess this goes to their ideology that anyone who was in their group of ring of hatred, do you know if they even had um, <clears throat> differentiating levels of hatred? I know they hated the Jews. They were like, they're, they're animals, pretty much. Mm-hmm. They needed to get rid of them. So as much as it anyone doesn't... that wasn't them, right? But but hold on. What what about like someone from Dutch or something? No, that's, that's the part like, of the they, war you don't really hear about, is that there probably was other, I'm just, other groups. Sure, and they probably dislike them, but not like to that degree, right? I don't know. Like, do they make delineations where this person's a Jew, or this person's a? Oh, but they're from a neighboring country. We don't like them, but they're not. They're not like that. Like, did they do that? I don't know. Or was it only Germans, only purebred, only like the the white, fair-haired types? Because what about dark-haired guys in the ranks? Like, were they like looked down upon? Like, I don't know where their lines ran. I don't know. You get the same sort of thing where. Like, history likes to take, like, one point and just, like, drive it. Polarization. Yeah. So, Polarization. A good guy versus a bad guy. There's you, no in-between. There's no medium. There's no... Right. It's easier to tell the story the that way, too. too. Since we grew up in America, right. we felt... Like, I felt like America was, like, number one for the slave trade, but that's totally... I mean, I wouldn't say it's totally not the case, but there are definitely right, right. a lot of other countries during that, that time didn't. period involved in the slave trade, and it's not only from the African countries that they're pulling slaves from. Right, I have heard this. Like, again, we're not... Not to diminish anything that happened. It's just, no, no, not at all. Just there is more to a story. Mm-hmm. So which the, is interesting. Yeah. So the yeah. Nazis probably hated anybody that wasn't them. Wasn't them. And then they're performing all these, like, nasty things. Well, did they do all that? That's what I was going to ask. It was all all Jewish people or no? No, no. There was I a imagine. number of different people. They would, like, perform surgeries without anesthesia. African Americans? No, no, no. But on who? African Americans, a variety of people. Whoever okay, so it was camps just whoever. Time. It was just anyone. It's, it's like crazy. Even I children. Guess. They would do this on children. Like they had twins, and they're like, "Oh, jackpot! We finally have twins. Like we can do these crazy experiments on." It's just like, guys. <laughs> but it what it tells me is that um, that they literally thought they were kind of like animals. Because I mean, I can see people doing something like that to animals. Mm-hmm. What gets me is that it's not. When does it become your ideology? Like, because you're clearly not born like that. So, is it just being a citizen, or once you join the Nazis, you kind of get this, or is it a whole? I guess it has to be a whole cultural thing, right? I I don't know because I feel like maybe some of the scientists really want to know, like the science right. behind it. They don't. I don't know that they okay. care about like you can the be a psychopath and be a right. scientist. A scientist, you're right. So maybe they just so find action. the scientists that are psychopaths and they're like, go ahead, do it. Now, what if they ask a scientist who, like, kind of had a conscience and was like, I don't want to do that. Like, does he do it, or does he say no, or does he risk getting killed, killed himself? maybe. They were forced uh-huh. into it. I did, I did read up about, uh, what, Nuremberg trials, right, where they tried yeah, to yeah, yeah, criminals. Yeah, yeah. There yeah. are some of the doctors that were involved in this that genuinely did not... Like, do anything, really? I wouldn't say they didn't do anything, but they didn't uh, aid in a bed. So they, they were let off and not found guilty of killing... Mm. War, war criminals, or war prisoners of war, rather. Okay. This is all very interesting, but I guess it also ties into today's stuff, like right now, where you get groups that are polarized so much that it's like they almost treat each other like not human. Well, which groups are you talking about? Are you going to get specific, or are you just going to go back to a... No, I was, I was being fairly general, just because the most staunch, let's say even in America, Republican, will hate the most liberal liberal right regardless of the actual belief it's more like that group is less than human that group is always wrong whichever side but i guess the only way to um, justify what you're doing to another group or 
voting against another group or whatever to another group is to think of them as less than human, right? Because otherwise, to do so would to break some kind of human code. Hmm. Like what I'm getting at is, anytime you do something extreme, the only reason logically that you'd be able to do it to another group of people is if you thought they were less than human, or, and you were, or you were like a good guy. Do you know what I mean? I always I come see, back. I could see the go, good guy argument, like you're doing it for the betterment of the human race by finding sure. out you're sacrificing one for many. Right, which I wouldn't agree with, but again, that's the only way that I could see them functioning as a logical being. I don't know if it applies to like left wing and right wing people, though. Yeah, I guess they're not as extreme. Yeah. Could it apply to suicide bombers and stuff, though? Uh, they think that what they're doing is right. It's for the greater good, right? I think. I don't know. I guess they're like the level of drama is their their like impact. So if they have like the most dramatic suicide bombing that they could change and they the hearts of people. the most people i guess yeah i don't i don't know it's all weird i don't i don't get too far into that i guess we're not the type of people who would ever be swayed yeah, one way or because we're kind of more moderates on that type of thing because we're not going to go right. swing left or right and we're not going to go crazy on people because we take things in moderation in a way uh-huh. it's like those people kind of go all in on one thing right mm-hmm. which is unhealthy to come full circle right yeah yeah so if you're all in on Allah, mix in some Buddhism, mix in some veganism, <laughs> have a little bit of pet love. You know what I mean? Go to a go to a golden retriever forum and check out what everybody's doing with the dogs. I don't know. Start weightlifting. I don't know. Do do a little something else. Diversify your portfolio, right? Mm-hmm. Diversify, diversify, diversify. So if you're a suicide bomber, our advice is on Panders, diversify. Come on. <laughs> Come on! See the world, they said. Check out The Sopranos. I don't know. Watch some cool TV. There's lots of good TV out there. I could see legitimately someone enjoying something and being like, I don't think I'm going to do this to people. There could be a Tony Soprano out there that I don't want to... Yeah, right? Well, anytime you diversify, you take in more viewpoints, more lines of sight, more opinions, more differing things than your own. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Again, those people that are so uber focused on one thing and probably only read one type of information and want, and listen to one type of leadership, mm-hmm. they become I don't know over overzealous, over the top, unhealthy. Moderation. Moderation, folks. Moderate the moderation. Whew. We just broke it down. <laughs> Did we solve the world's problems? I think we did. Holy shit, Jesus. Man. Woo! All right. Woo! I know. Folks, I'm jealous of me also. Huh, interesting you should say jealous. Oh, I didn't buy the shirt. In fact, it probably appeared on a previous episode. No, actually, I don't think I've seen that yet. Nice. Do you know the difference between jealous and envious? No, uh, I do know Brad Pitt figures it out probably at the end of seven, but I, I still don't know. I think jealous- what is in the box? He enviously thought. Oh no, that's jealousy. He enviously thought. I don't know. <laughs> the do uh, you know? the Simpsons actually Homer says the difference between jealous and being jealous yeah. and envious. So jealousy Our- is that you're afraid that someone's going to take something from you. Mm-hmm. Envious, you want something that belongs to someone else. Mm, yeah. Something you don't have. Right. Well, sure. Okay. So you can have envy because you don't have bars of gold. But, but hold you on. Can't you can't be jealous be, of people. You can't you're not jealous, jealous of your neighbor for having a better car? Is that called envy? That's called envy. Really? So it's a misused word, huh? Yeah. So if you, have a, if you don't have a oh. wife, you can't be jealous of someone who has a wife. You're envious, envious. of them. But if you have a wife, and you they have a be better jealous wife? that they're going oh. to take your wife. Oh, in, oh, hold on, the, the backwards. In the bedroom. That doesn't that doesn't make sense though. Hold on, you're jealous someone's gonna take your wife? Uh huh. That doesn't make sense. It seems weird. Trust me. Okay. I did oh, this oh. too because I found out like two weeks ago, and I was like, "Really? Are you sure? Internet? Are you sure? Were you asking? Oh, I thought you were asking. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Are you sure? No, oh, no. Oh, oh. I can't do some impersonations. Hmm. Don't want to end up sued. So you should look into that. Interesting. I'm going to go back to the mustard gas, though. 
Go for it. I'd like to hear more about mustard. So that was like an accidental cure, right? And it was Mm -hmm. the same thing with penicillin. So Mm -hmm. accidental cure. Yeah. uh, I think it was the the guy's name was Fleming. He was working with something, and there was a a fungus growing on his samples. Like he screwed Mm -hmm. up a petri dish and was like, "Oh, there's fungus on here. I may just..." Oh wait a second. This is scrape it away. Yeah, this is curing something. And then he made penicillin out of it. (laughs) And (laughs) this is curing a disease. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Anyway, he figured it out somehow. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna I'm gonna take a turn here though. So like he Mm -hmm. found a way to to cure something by accident, and that probably happens all the time. It's kind of like I think it does. You're Always. making these random scenarios so that you can find a medication that cures something random. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to spin it. So there's these there's people that have in the past, like, searching for cures for, uh, I think it was, like, stomach ulcers. Mm-hmm. And they came up with aspartame. Or, or, or something. No, they didn't come up with a cure. They came up with fake sugar. Oh, really? And the way they came up with that is because they had, like, a cigarette. And they accidentally put the cigarette in the... Uh, <laughs> The, the stomach ulcer oh, cream so or whatever sweet. it was. Yeah, and it tasted oh, so sweet, so they're like, wait oh, a second. Yeah. I like that they're just haphazardly smoking around the subjects <laughs> yeah. like while they're out of their cage and like just having a good time. Uh-huh. This is like Ooh. back in the 70s, I guess. You were allowed to do that stuff. Although, wouldn't have discovered it otherwise, right? That's true, but it, it doesn't, I don't know if that makes it right, because it's not... It's like a manufacturing, uh, I guess... Sugar? Sweetness? Yeah, manufacturing sugar... But Which it, is already not good for you. Yeah, there's no. So an unnatural sugar. Yeah, there's no, there's no cure to it. It's just un, unreasonable, I guess. Hmm. Makes sense. The same. What I was gonna say. Oh, good. No, keep going. You got it. You gonna say something? Nope, I forgot. In that one second span. I apologize. Oh, it was the um, the light and dark of all things. You do a whole podcast on it, but you're making, let's say, penicillin. Mm-hmm. I imagine there's a light side and a dark side to every single thing on Earth. Recently, I've been doing a lot of Buddhist research, so a lot of my thoughts, this is the way I think. Mm-hmm. Alan Watts, I'm saying, I'm just saying. So you're saying like the method that they found penicillin is there's the, the light side and the dark side is... Overused, or I don't know. Oh, uh, Penicillin was a bad example. Which was the one where someone was trying to make a cure for... Oh, mustard gas. The dark, and then the cure for cancer, the light. Like, mm-hmm. all things have a spectrum of good and bad, and it really depends on how they're used, how it's overused, how it's underused, what it's applied to. Mm-hmm. And so all things kind of have differing values. Like, something like good for you, milk, when a small dose here, could be deadly at dose here. It, it could be very good to other animals. It could be really bad to certain animals. It kills them instantly. Like there's a light and a dark to all things, so they all have you kind of find a balance. I don't know. I like You're it. Just kicking that. Out. But mustard gas was my example when you were saying it yeah. a few times. It's kind of a matter of perspective. It's like as mm-hmm. a scientist, if you're testing something, you want to gather the data and make it as objective as possible. Because How your perspective is, I'm trying to cure something or I'm trying to fix something. Science isn't though. Yeah. Science is just about measuring the actual data. Mm-hmm. So someone Objective. later would come by and take your notes and say, you know, it shows like you've cured cancer here, but you don't realize it because you're just trying to cure warts or something stupid. Like, right. I'm going to use it to poison babies, or I'm <laughs> going to use it to make a new sweetener for Coca-Cola. Yeah. Exactly. Diet Coke with zero calories. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! But yeah, that's, I guess it's all about light and dark a little bit, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. which also brings me back to moderation, as I may say that word mm-hmm. a couple times, that you can find something in the middle. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. I just think going too far in one direction tips the scale, so to speak. It's nice to be able to see both ends. You only see it from the middle, right? I don't know. Unless, oh my god, the light gets so bright it turns dark, and the dark is so bright it turns light, and we got a friggin' circle. That's all I was going with. I wasn't going to go any further. Just some deep thoughts. Maybe it's too late at night. Maybe I... Hmm. Getting a little sleepy. Possible. Mm-hmm. I did my vacation drive today. I hit no traffic. Incredibly. Wow. I'm a really good driver, though, so that's probably why. <laughs> Let me bring up one more thing. Do it. 
So I was, watching, uh, yeah. I was watching a Netflix show called uh, Chef's Table. Uh-huh. I was just distracting people. No, that's fine. That's fine. <laughs> Chef's Table. One of the things they were doing in like the second episode was that so peppers are originally like their goal is to get you know when a pepper's when a, a pepper makes itself I guess I don't know what the word is born I know you want to say born <laughs> I so say bad. born but when it when it's when it's made it has the seeds it's and the seeds are intended to be spread by birds so they could okay. pro- proliferate <laughs> makes sense so the birds actually can't taste the pepperiness like the spiciness the capsaicin huh so it's it's like nature's way of saying like birds are a perfect mate for the peppers so is the whatever the spices and peppers supposed to scare other animals away though exactly, just not birds the okay, birds are, know the birds can travel the farthest okay so they want the birds they don't want the other animals they're yeah. garbage they're worthless they're stupid so there's some innate birds. intelligence there Probably. that like the pepper which doesn't have any intelligence is trying to manipulate no, evolution evolution yeah, we'll evolution we'll just evolution it but what um what the chef in this one episode was saying was he was using chickens to, and they were eating like a puree of peppers and he was trying to make an egg that was spicy without adding pepper to it. Okay. So he was getting Wait. these chickens to lay eggs that were full of capsaicin and pepper that were they? the color red. Were they spicy? Yes. So he got... I'll let you let that sink in. Yeah, yeah, it's like no yeah. one ever tried this before. Did it, it, so it worked. It worked. He made, he's made a breed of spicy eggs, and you just have to feed these chickens Crazy amount so of peppers. much pepper. Yeah. Like a, a, an, an or, inordinate <laughs> amount that wouldn't be worth a spicy spicy egg, yeah, right? But maybe, it, okay. who, kn- who knows how much that spicy egg You're I mean, right. What it's worth is what it's worth. It's unique. And it doesn't hurt the chicken. So it's like, wait a second. Like, this, this kind of makes sense. sense. I never thought of doing that. And it gets enough of that through the uh, birthing process? Yeah. The the egg was actually red, and they had the guy eat it on camera and was like, ooh, like, <laughs> this is spicy. Weird. <laughs> He's like, this took dozens of years and thousands of dollars of peppers. What do you think? He's like, it's like if I had an egg and put a little pepper on it. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. He's got it. He's got it. But... He's got it. <laughs> My life's work. But it is cool. Yeah, the whole episode was about uh, the manufacturability of plants and hmm. crops. So they want like the biggest of something that fits inside of this box, so they could package it and sell it to the masses. And it right. was the opposite of that. It's like, why don't you just like grow something that tastes Work fantastic? And they're and like, it's very few in supply and demand. Yeah, and the farmer's okay. like, well, no one's ever asked me to make something that tastes <laughs> good. No one's ever asked me to do something delicious. Yeah. That is weird because it's the opposite of capitalism. Yeah. So capitalism like, kind of sucks, by the way. Yeah, in certain fashions. I'm not an, I'm not anti-capitalist. I just, it does suck in some ways. They all suck. Moderation, folks. Moderation. Yeah. I feel like suck. capitalism has this tiny little percentage that's like, you know, ingenious stuff that should be happening and just showing the world what this, that stuff is. Self-proliferative. I got sure. that right. Sure. Or messed up all those other words, but then there's like ninety percent that's just bullshit. That's just like you know. Well, get... and it just it destroys poor people. Yeah. It makes the rich richer. Like you know, it screws up yeah. markets. Whatever. Let's we're allocate going. all the wealth to those people who can dictate what happens. But otherwise, we're it's hard to allocate wealth in general. We're not going to get into it. Yeah, we're never going to get. That's too. Nah. That's yep. Topsy turvy. Mm-mm-mm. Slippery slopes, folks. Yep. Don't want to have a hankering for that hankering. Mm, slippery, slippery, slippery. Hmm. All right. I think that concludes our episode for this evening. I think it does. <laughs> I'm Nick. And I'm Dan. I almost got you. <laughs> I almost said you. Together Dan. we are both. The Unpanderers. <laughs> so, check our socials because we have a lot of them. There's a website. Check the website. Above. Unpanders.com. Finger blast this website. Just go there and just mm, get deep, get deep, get deep. Yeah. Folks, do it. You know you want to. Go check it out. Tell your loved ones that are over 18. And we'll not repeat a lot of the words we say. <laughs> definitely. Because we like you, folks. We definitely do. We like you a lot. 
keep listening because we do. We like you folks. We like you a lot. I think that's uh, 